Welcome to The Value Script. I'm your host, Lonnie Carmichael. Today, we have a very special guest who will probably be here a lot, I hope. Meredith Carmichael, welcome to the show. Thanks. I'm excited. It's going to be great. Thank you. Sorry. I'm already displaying how rookie host skills I have. I almost <laughs> talked over you. Good. Why are we doing this podcast? Well, to add value to people's lives. I think um, you especially have a lot of life experience and knowledge and value to add to people. So We. We. We, <laughs> we do. We do. It's in the name. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of the reasons yeah. I wanted to write, uh, start this uh, a podcast and have a voice and a platform with which to hopefully bring a valuable portion of life to every episode where the listener can tactically take from that show something they can apply and make their life better every day. And one of my main motivations from doing that was my career. Uh, I'm a pediatric dentist and as <clears throat> stigmatized we have a reputation for having mental health issues that plague our profession. And I have a number of very close experiences with friends who have gone through some disastrous mental health um, scenarios and some with not some great outcomes. And that inspired me to think I didn't want to idly sit by and watch my colleagues suffer, especially if they didn't know they had an advocate especially if they didn't know a lot of us go through this. Many of us go through this. Does it hit you hard too? It has, it has hit me really hard. Um, well, and just life. I mean, even not just, life. just with in dentistry, but well, life is, it, life can be hard. It's like I was talking with Dr. Mike yesterday. Um, do we want to do a shameless plug for these guys as it comes up? Like yeah. Dr. Mike's car partner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's totally up to you. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mike Andrula, he is um, the VSC Integrated Chiropractic, the greatest chiropractor that we have found to deliver results that work. He called me yesterday fortuitously at, at, a, at a perfect timing as, as things generally happen. Um, but we were, we were discussing putting together a network for professionals, like-minded medical professionals, but the reason I bring that up is because you asked if I've been touched by mental health and as a, as a medical care professional or um, everything in your life affects you as the practitioner and your, and, and also your job affects every detail of your life. And so in order to have uh, continue to be at the cutting edge of your profession, delivering patient care, we have to continue to keep our mental focus and our mental edge sharp and, we, we have to be disciplined enough to have a daily routine that contributes to that. Um, I have a couple of very close friends that are dentists. Um, the most impactful was my friend, Kurt, who is no longer with us. And he struggled with mental health for years. He was a phenomenal man. He was a phenomenal dentist, probably an even better dentist. And, um, he was excellent at what he did. He was tremendously successful. He was well-liked. He had a great reputation. And he struggled with mental health. And he even said himself one day, I have no idea why I'm so unhappy. And um, he's like, you know, I have a phenomenal career. I have the family I've always wanted. I have the income I've wanted. And I'm miserable. And he, and he struggled with that. And um, I, you know, we have gone through something pretty insurmountable the last four years with what I call my midlife crisis and my struggles with mental health, depression, anxiety. As you guys can see, I'm probably starting to sweat right now. I deal with anxiety on a daily basis. And, and then also, you know, my, uh, one of my dentists I work very closely with on a grand scale is his battle with alcoholism and, and leading to, you know, a suicide attempt that I just didn't want to sit here and be quiet any longer and not do everything I could within my power to help provide a platform to help other like-minded individuals. Everybody goes through something that's difficult in their life. And whether you're a pediatric dentist or uh, a farmer or a banker or um, you dig ditches for a living, you know, there's going to be I mean, look struggles. at any of the celebrities. I mean, uh, Robin Williams. Oh, man. One of the funniest I, men on the planet. Yeah. Literally would have never... 
even thought about it and right. my that that was a possibility with robin williams yeah. and he brings so much joy to other people you would never think that he exactly. would struggle in that way yeah exactly um the lead singer of uh lincoln park yeah. you know he we didn't even know it in his lyrics he was literally like expressing it but to us as listeners, it's like, all you think about is like, oh, these are just his lyrics. These are just, ro- this is just rock music. And then it's, it ends up almost being like a cry for help as you, you as we reflect and look back at. Exactly. At which is yeah. crazy to look back on. Right. Well, I can tell you, as I was going through my struggles and what we've been through the last few years, Linkin Park was one of those bands that felt like they were just singing the anthem of my soul. Every song it seemed like almost every song could apply in some way to our struggles that we went through with our faith, with our marriage personally. Um, so he, he was sharing and it lifted me up. And because that became so personally motivating or personally healing for me to listen to that, maybe even more sad that he succumbed to, um, yeah, the outcomes of of mental health. And so, um, I just, I, I was, my friend's funeral when we were there, it was one of the best funerals I've ever been to. And it was so loving. The pastor was amazing. He put together something great. And he said something so profound. And I'm going to, I'm a very emotional <laughs> beast. And so I'm going to try to keep my emotions under control because I want to be the blubbering idiot on the microphone. But uh, the pastor at the end of the service, he says, we all have questions in our minds as to what happened. You know, was this suicide? Was this an accident? And he paused. They looked he said, does it matter? He says, what matters is not to let, not to let this death be in vain. We need to move forward and make sure that our lives are changed in a way that our friend's death wasn't in vain. So what are you going to do to move the needle in your life so that this wasn't in vain? And that hit me. That was when I thought, I got to do something. And I wanted to create a podcast for dental professionals specifically, but I also wanted to speak to my, my wonderful wife and our marriage and our family and our daily struggles and everything we do. I want to create a podcast that everybody can relate to, not just the dental professional. Um, as dentists, as a profession, we've, you know, we were told all through dental school, why do you want to be a dentist? The suicide rate is the second highest suicide rate in any profession. In dental? Well, that was the rumor. Is, oh, is the okay. dentists have the second highest suicide rate of any profession. That's crazy. Um, I think, um, I can't remember what number one was, but um, that, I don't think that statistic is accurate. But from the statistics I've read and just roughly quoting them, they're not exact, but dental professionals, um, suicide among dental professionals is about 8%. But Why uh, is it so hot? Is there something within the profession that, I don't, I guess I'm trying to figure out where, um, I mean, you can struggle with anything. Sure. In any profession, any profession, any profession you can have, but yeah. why so much in dental? I don't know. I I've reflected upon that. I have a few thoughts, um, that, that I can, I can share on that, but, but I looked up in statistically physicians on average are about 7%. Nurses really? are about 6%. I think healthcare in general, especially now. And those, those statistics were from 2014, pre-pandemic statistics. It, you know, everything, so... I can only imagine it went up from there. Well, my friend that passed, um, that was in, that was before the pandemic, right before the pandemic. Um, my really good friend who had the battle with depression and alcoholism and ended up in a suicide attempt. Um, that was during the, the pandemic. And... Um, I, I know the pandemic didn't make things easier for mental health care professional or for healthcare professionals as far as their mental health is concerned. But um, I think mental health or healthcare in, in general is just, it's inherently stressful. We are the type of individual that is constantly reflecting upon your performance and constantly looking at how to make it better. Mm. And not only it, it's part of being a, pro, a medical professional, that's almost a code of ethics. Like if you're not continually getting better, you're actually not being the best doctor you can be. And if you're not being the best doctor you can be, you're not providing your patients with the health service they're really looking to receive. And so if you're really not 
every day reflecting upon your performance, how it was, where you were bad and, mm -hmm. and where you can improve, you're really not progressing as a professional. And then, so you pour all that, your heart and soul into being the best you can be. And there's still some people in the public that they'll treat you like garbage just because they're having a bad day. Yeah. And they, they really don't appreciate your efforts. So it sounds like the highest level of self-criticism in a profession. I don't know that what the statistics are, but I know that it's, there's quite a bit in ours, but I mean, yeah. I think in anything you do excellent, it, you, any profession where you're going to perform at the highest level you have possible, you have to have, you have to be self-reflective and you have to have a routine, a daily routine to keep you healthy of meditation, um, physical exercise, mental exercise, reading positive, putting positive information inside your brain. Usually, you know, reading a book that helps do that, listening to positive media. Um, and those, if you don't do those things, then the negatives creep in. Um, do you just need to shift and change to um, putting out good energy? Instead of complaining about what you're doing, are you trying to improve your space, right? All the time you spend wallowing in, I'm not happy. I'm, I got robbed at my job or I should have gotten a promotion, but I didn't or the, the boss has it out for me and all this negative thinking is wasted time because it's okay to reflect upon that only so much as it helps you motivate yourself into new behavior and better behaviors. Otherwise it's worthless. And so, and I mean, you have to, you have to mentally um, feel feelings and deal with those things, but spending any more time than necessary doing that is time you could be spending improving yourself, improving your space, making your technique that much better making yourself that much more valuable as an employee or making yourself more a that much more able to have a lateral to get you out of the current employment situation that you're not happy with. But all the negativity is sending out negativity and that's what you're going to return back. And so what are you putting out into the world? Is it your best self? Because if it's not, you're probably not getting the best or what you would like for your best self back. And you are directly in control of that. Where you are in your life in this day is a direct reflection upon the decisions and the and the actions that you've been taking over the last three or four years. And if you want a different life, start today. Start today and make your life better. And, and in the, whatever circle of influence you have, be a little more excellent. Be a little more professional. Be a little more courteous. Be a little nicer. Be a little more graceful. Have a little more love towards your fellow man and woman. And, and be the change you want to see in the world. You will see that come back. All right, with that in mind, that sounds like a great place to end the show for today. Um, Appreciate that you were able to be here with me, especially on our maiden voyage. Right. Thanks, babe. Uh, it's going to be great. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for listening. Appreciate your time. We know your time is precious to you, and we're grateful that we can be a precious part of that time. If you found value in today's show, we, we uh, would encourage you to pay that forward and um, share the show with people that you find would enjoy the content. Thank you. Thank you.